Well, it's rear diff rebuild day. Finally got a Saturday free. Um, Notice the rear diff oil seal was leaking. Got up under it. Notice some play on the pinion. Not a lot, but I figure while I got the thing apart, I might as well just put new bearings in it. Um, got kit from Sean Faust, Specialized ATV. Uh, hooked me up with a kit of bearings that are better than OEM, so hopefully it'll last uh, quite a while. Got about 1,500 miles on the bike. Rode it hard, um, made it this far, so I'll get the diff out, get it apart, check all the gears, replace the bearings, oil seal, wear ring, put fresh royal purple in there, should be good to go. Alright, so after, I always clean my bike up good, go over all the known problems that can start to happen, um, clean off the seals bushings, U-joints, all that, and last time I rode it, I cleaned it off and I was checking and I saw uh, I did have some wetness around the oil seal in the rear, um, so I got under there and just messed around with it and I noticed, I don't know if you could see it, just a tiny bit of play in the pinion. So that tells me the bearing is going bad and rather than wait, Till it goes bad um, I'm just gonna replace the bearings I got to change the oil so anyway so I figure I'll just take the whole thing out and uh, split the case and check it out replace the bearings place the oil seal wearing um, while I have it all apart but yeah everything looks good except for that all right so finally got this bugger out um, yeah it was a mess the oil, it was low, it was black, had water in it, so this was certainly necessary. Um, again, hard to see the play, but there is some play there. Um, so being that the oil was low and the way that it looked, I think it's good to split the case and just check out all the gears. So the bearings I'm going to be putting in... Uh, are not OEM. These are from Sean Faust at Specialized ATV. Uh, they specialize in uh, rear diffs, XMR diffs. Um, mine's an XXC, so I had to get these are the bearings that go in that. Three bearings, two axle seals, oil seal, and a new needle bearing. Um, but in order to get that nut out, this one here, you have to use the Can Am's tool, which is ridiculously expensive, or you can get this off of Sean Faust also, um, I think for like less than half of what can Am's charging. Basically, it fits just like that. Hook it up to a, a, like a torque bar, torque and just breaker bar, I mean, and just wrench it. Now, this thing is, it's a, it's a left-handed thread, so to loosen it, um, you have to turn it clockwise. Let's go ahead and do that. This. Again, I'm going to try to turn this thing clockwise. It's torqued pretty good. Um, I forget the specs, but um, I'll look them up before I put it back together. And it does have that, uh, I see the k ms yellow thread locker on there. So just give it up. <sighs> Good torque, clockwise. And it spins right off. But you need this special tool. Um, some people use an inch and a half square piece of steel stock that I guess the square ends, if you grind, you might have to grind them down a little bit, but they'll fit right in these, in four corners, and then you can hook a pipe wrench up, or some people have fab welded a, a spot to uh, add a breaker bar to it. Um, I could have, I could have done that probably cheaper than what it costs to get the tool, but um, I do work on these can -Ams and this tool fits on multiple years, um, Renegades, Outlanders, Mavericks, Commanders, 
um, their diffs, um, also the front diff. So I'll get I'll get enough use out of it to justify the cost, and that way, it is it's e it was it's easier and it's done right. So. So now she's coming out fine. Okay. Set that down. And I'm curious to see what the pinion gear is going to look like because, like I said, the condition of that oil um, was nasty. But I'm hoping that I caught it quick enough uh, that it's not going to have caused any crazy damage. And before cleaning that off, Actually looks really not bad. Actually really good. Let's clean it off and see what it looks like. Did I have to replace this bearing? I probably could have got a few more rides out of it, but it's not gonna get any better. It's only gonna get worse and the way I am with my machines, it'll just bother me, so I just bit the bullet, spent a hundred bucks. Sean Foss got these Upgraded bearings. Um, I had to replace the oil so anyway, so I just thought I might as well just inspect it. I never took this diff apart. Um, not only inspect it, but replace the bearing since I had it apart. And I mean, there is... Sorry for the focus. Those look just fine very little wear if for about 1500 miles obviously I'll clean them up better get a better look at them but yeah I guess I got lucky um, and this is why I clean the bike every ride I go after it look at every single known fail point every maintenance part bushings grease everything u-joints seals um, because otherwise, I might not have seen that, and it could have looked a lot worse. Alright, so now what I want to do is I want to crack the case. Um, I use it, I use my impact, I love my impact, but I don't want to put it on these, um, to loosen them up, because who knows how tight they're going to be. Uh, you got to use a 40 Torx. Yeah, 40 Torx. So I'm going to crack them here with by hand get them started Not the easiest. Um, I'm using my phone to record this, so I'll throw the impact on. And it'll be easier to see. Okay. Gently. Batteries dying. Well, I'll do that one by hand. All right, so that one was uh, a little bit of pain. Um, just some, just some corrosion on there. That's all. These things go through some crazy stuff, so of course it's gonna cause some rust. But we should be able to pull the halves. Uh huh. Make sure that little O-ring. I'm gonna save that. If it's bad, you gotta replace it. Otherwise, you'll keep getting water in here. Let's set that aside for now. And let's check out our gears. Oh yeah, that oil was nasty. But. Overall, eh, looks pretty good. I don't see no broken teeth. I don't even see much wear. For 
1500 miles so i'm glad i'm doing this rebuild now i got peace of mind that i know it should last at least another 1500 miles um, but some things you do have to look for when taking this apart is the amount of shims and the thickness of them it's a three notch and i believe there's only one that has to go back exactly how you had it And then the other one, there should be some here, yep. Yeah, only one here, a two notch. So, two underneath and one on top, or three on top, you gotta keep them and put them back exactly how they were. Now, if I was replacing uh, the pinion gear, I'd have to reshim it with for, to check and check for preload and backlash. Um, but since I'm using the same gears, since it might look good, I'm just replacing bearings. I'm going to use the same shims in the same spots, and it uh, should be all good. But you have to put them back exactly how they come apart, or you'll have some problems. All right, so we've got everything cleaned up. Everything looks good. Now we got to start doing uh, some work to get the bearings done. Um, you have this bearing. You have that needle bearing. You have that bearing, you have this seal, you have that seal, and then uh, we'll put on a new um, a new oil seal and wear ring um, when we're ready. So we gotta pop this guy off there. Easy. And this guy here. Not so easy with one hand. I'll have to put it in the vise. Um, yeah, got to get that guy off there. Then I'll clean up the outsides a little bit too. I can't stand working on a dirty bike. All right, so inside uh, the rear diffs uh, for the pinion, there is a needle bearing in there. Um, you'll see that I have a blind hole puller uh, attachment already in there. Um, you need a blind hole puller. Um, I rented one from AutoZone. Um, this one doesn't even look like it's ever been used, but you can get tools from AutoZone, specialty tools. You just you basically buy them, use them, and take them back, and they refund you the full amount. So you can basically rent uh, most tools for free, AutoZone. I'm sure Advanced Auto Parts, O'Reilly's has them, uh, Napa, but AutoZone's right down the street, so that's where I went. So I took this piece here. I'll just show you on this one. So the way it works is... You slide this in to the bearing and you stabilize the spreader and you tighten this nut down. And what it does is it spreads, puts pressure on the bearing. Um, so once you get that in there, basically you're jamming it in there real good. Then you take a slide hammer. Hook it up. to the puller Come on. like so and then you're going to give it a few whacks once you get that attached then you're going to give it a few whacks and it should pull that bearing out of that hole um, it's a tough bearing because uh, you can't just punch it through from the other side, so you do need uh, this tool or a tool like it. I know Harbor Freight sells them, um, but they're like 70 bucks. I figure I'm not going to use it that often, and if I do, AutoZone's right down the street. I could just go grab one. So let's uh, give it a few whacks and see. Check how we're doing. Oh, yeah. You can see she's coming out. that's it you didn't have to grind it out damage that hole damage that seat because you don't want to damage that seat um, and there's the little guy right there for focuses sweet now uh, I'll clean up that hole 
and get ready to put new needle bearing in. Okay. Be careful, you don't want to lose GM that up because then you mess up those bearings and your bearing's bad. But all those little needles in there, that's why they call it a needle bearing. Pinion, let's see. Pinion, actually when it goes in, it seats into that. And those little needles have to be in good shape in order to let it spin freely. Because you don't want any resistance because, you know, these things go, these things spin pretty pretty fast under a lot of load. So you got to be careful when you put that back in. I'll show you how to put it back in once I get everything all uh, cleaned up. All right, so now for the needle bearing. Um, what I do is... There, there's a tool you could buy for Can-Am. It's like a plastic piece that looks similar to that. Um, when I was talking to Sean Faust, he said, um, before you put the bearing on this, what you do, put some oil in the in the little well, put some oil in the needle, belt, uh, needle bearing itself. Come around the side. Slide your pinion into it, like that. This is hard to do with one hand, believe me. Um, and just tap the rubber mallet doesn't take much force to get it to seat. Okay. Get that out slowly. And there you go. Easy peasy. Okay, so now time to come over to the the press. Um, we're going to get these old bearings off and get the new ones in. Um, but you can really see now that now that I have it out, you can really see the play in that bearing. It was pretty minimal, um, but it's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. It should have no play whatsoever. So I'm going to press the old bearing out, put the new one on. All right, so to press the old one out. Kind of make a jig to let the pinion fit in there, um, but hold the bearing because we're going to push to get it, the old one off. You have to push the pinion out of the bearing. So I try to get it lined up here. Let's see where we're at here. Okay. Sorry, it's shaky. Okay. Try to get it lined up best you can. You want everything to be straight. Get a little closer and then I'll move it a little forward. Okay. And then should be able to slowly press it out. Shouldn't take too much force. This is a uh, it's a 12 ton press, so again you don't you don't need much. Um, and then you're just gonna have to catch the pinion because it's gonna fall from below. So let me. More of that nasty oil on there, so I have to clean that up before I put the new one on. And there's your old bearing. Alright, got it all cleaned up. Um, there is an O-ring. Don't focus. There is an O-ring right here. If it's damaged, you got to replace it. Mine looks good. I'm going to reuse it. Um, and there's also a shim that you have to have on there. If you don't have that, um, it just won't run right. So make sure you keep that on there. Um, I like to put a little bit of before I push the new bearing on there. I like to put a little bit of the good stuff on there. It'll work its way all the way around there. And then you take a new bearing and you gotta fit it like so. And now it's just the uh, similar to what we did taking it out. We have to 
push. They have to keep their jigs so the bottom of the pinion can go through um, and hold the bearing so it just pushes this down. So I might need to make an adjustment on my press. Ah, I'm going to have to lower it. i got to lower it all the way down. A second. Alright, so we got it just right. You want to make sure it's in the middle. And just go slow because it's got to go in straight. There you go. So it hits bottom. <clears throat> All right, so there it is. There is zero play in that one. So we should be good for a long time. And Sean Foss, he said these um, these are double lipped bearings. Um, the bearings he sells are super high quality, so. I don't foresee having much trouble uh, unless I do something really stupid. Spins freely, no play, it's all the way seated. That's how you replace a bearing on a rear diff pinion. Okay, spins freely, no play, not even a little bit. And that's it. And that is how you replace a rear diff pinion bearing on a King and M. All right. So for the case bearings, there's one on each side. This one, that one. Um, throw them on the press. I'm gonna press them out that way. Press the new one in this way. Um, my buddy has this uh, oversized socket set from Harbor Freight. It makes for great, um, great sizers to push bearings, wheel bearings. I use it. More for that, I think, than anything else. Um, so you just set it up on there. Put your socket in. One that fits. Good. Get it lined up. Okay, everything is pretty close. Start pushing it there, and it's going to fall at the bottom. Thirty two metric socket is your best bet for that. So pushing the case bearing in, a forty five metric socket works perfect. Get everything up straight. Get it close. Okay, and then just start pushing slow. Everything's going in nice and straight. But I did put some more purple around it to help move it up. All right in. See you hit bottom. There you go.